Sometimes taking damage is just a sad fact of video gaming life. But don't worry, all is not lost. With the Recover series of chips, you can regain that lost health. The Recover series of chips is exactly what it says on the label. They're health recovery, no more, no less. When you use one, it stops time and gives you back some health. They come in several flavors. Recover 10. Recover 30. Recover 50. Recover 80. Recover 120. Recover 150. Recover 200. And finally the strongest, Recover 300. Next is another of those chips that just doesn't quite belong with anything else. It's a rather strategic chip that can be used for various things. It's time to discuss the finer points of theft with steel. Next up we have steel. This converts the closest enemy column to one for you, giving you more area to move around in and the enemy less area. It can also be used as a slight attack. If you hit an enemy with it, it does 10 damage. However, this does come with a bit of a trade-off. If a column hasn't been completely captured, you can't steal any further in. Amusingly though, it does mean that you can use steel to delete the enemy if you're so inclined. Now if you really want to mess with your opponent, why not call down the ultimate force of chaos? Unleash the wrath of the Geddon series. Just be careful about the situation it'll put you in too. So first up is Geddon 1. When used, this chip cracks every single panel on the field. It can be used fairly strategically though. For instance, limiting ground-based attacks. Just be sure that you don't end up trapping yourself. And then there's Geddon 2. Um, yeah. This one destroys any and all unoccupied panels. Which, um, yeah, it traps the enemy, but it traps you too. <laughs> uh, I guess it's good if you know your opponent only uses ground-based attacks. So next up we have three. Count them. Three chips that don't belong with anything else. They're right next to each other in the library, but have nothing to do with each other. So let's discuss Escape, Interrupt, and Repair. Escape is pretty much what it says in the name. It lets you run from battle. It can't be used against plot element bosses, nor can it be used against friendly battles, such as those against Woodman, Sharkman, that sort of thing. I'd assume it also can't be used in player versus player. Using it basically just ends the battle. So then there's Interrupt. This one's only useful in player versus player. You can't really see visually what it did, but it erased my opponent's battle chips, so that kind of leaves him helpless for a turn. Next up is Repair. This chip fixes all panels, but only on your side of the field. So if your opponent is still having problems getting around, well, it just kind of leaves them a tempting target. And now back to chips that are actually part of a group. These are kind of the delayed attack of the collection. The Time Bomb family. The Time Bomb series of chips places a Time Bomb in the enemy side of the field. It counts as a stage object, but you can even hit it with your own attacks, thus destroying it before it goes off. It takes three seconds to detonate, and once it does, it sends rolling explosion columns going down the enemy side of the field. There's Time Bomb 1, which does 80 damage. Time Bomb 2, which does 120 damage. As usual, just takes a few moments. 
And finally, Time Bomb 3, which does 160 damage. Just be careful nothing destroys it before it gets a chance to go off. Looking for a way to rain on the enemy's parade? There's a chip for that. It's the Cloud series. The Cloud family of chips summons a rain cloud that drifts up and down the nearest column with an enemy in it. You can only have one active cloud at a time, but due to its movement, it will usually hit the enemy more than once. This family consists of Cloud, which does 30 aqua damage per hit and drifts up and down its chosen column once. Cloudier, which does 50 aqua damage per strike, is a little bit faster and does one and a half sweeps through its chosen column. And finally, Cloudiest, which does 100 aqua damage per hit, is faster still, and does two full back and forth sweeps through its chosen column, giving it a lot of opportunities to do damage. Why let your opponent see all your attacks coming? Try using the Mine series of chips to hide an explosive little surprise for them to find later. The Mine family of chips stops time and randomly buries a landmine on the enemy's side of the field. Once buried, it does damage to the first thing to land on that panel. This family consists of Mine 1, which does 160 damage. Mine 2, which does 180 damage. As soon as he finds it, anyway. There it is! And Mine 3, which does 200 damage. You can only have one mine at a time, so no spamming the enemy field. If setting traps is your thing, you might like this group, the Dynamite series. It's great for limiting where your opponent can move, unless they want to catch an explosion. The Dynamite series lets you place a sensor bomb. Depending on its level, this bomb looks in certain directions, and then detonates once something trips the sensor, damaging anything in its line of sight. Dynamite 1 looks straight forward and does 100 damage to anything it can find. Next is Dynamite 2, which searches diagonally up and down, and does 120 damage. You can use it in the middle row in order to cover both the top and bottom rows, or you can use it from the top and bottom to maximize its range. And finally there's Dynamite 3, which scans directly up and down and does 150 damage. So it has the least potential range, but does the most damage. Perhaps the strangest group of chips in the game is the Remobit series. This one was interesting to look at because demoing it for these purposes was the first time I'd ever actually tried them. The Remobit series of chips is kind of strange, really. When you first use it, it drops a controller right in front of you, and that starts the remote control Remobit flying around the enemy side of the field. The thing is, you are not in direct control of it yourself. So, using this as a viable attack can be a bit hit and miss. Really, it's more about limiting where the enemy can go. Yes, it will damage the enemy if it happens to zap them, but if it hits an unoccupied panel, it destroys it. Each level of Remobit takes a different path around the enemy field. Remobit 1 does 80 elect damage if it happens to zap an enemy, and it takes a vertical figure 8 pattern around the field. A couple of things to note about Remobit is that if something destroys the controller, it ends the attack early. Also notable, it self-destructs after a while anyway, so it is a limited time thing. Next up is Remobit 2. This one flies around the enemy side of the field a bit faster than Remobit 1, and also it's in a horizontal figure 8 pattern this time, like an infinity symbol. It does 100 elect damage to anything it happens to zap. Since it goes around faster, the panels have less time to heal, so this one's really good at limiting where the enemy can move. And finally, there's Remobit 3. This one flies around faster still and delivers 120 elect damage to any target it hits. This one just flies in a ring pattern. It never hits the center panel of the enemy field. Also notable, 
if you put the controller in the enemy side of the field, it cannot zap itself.